Have you ever thought about starting your own podcast? When I was trying to get this podcast off the ground, I had a lot of questions. How do I record an episode? How do I get my show into all the apps people like to listen? How do I make money from my podcast? Well, the answer to every one of these questions is really simple. Anchor. Anchor is a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing your podcast. Best of all, it's 100% free and ridiculously easy to use. And now, Anchor can match you with great sponsors who want to advertise on your podcast. That means you can get paid to podcast right away. In fact, that's what I'm doing right now by reading this ad. When I started using anchor to do my podcast, it was so extremely easy that I haven't even bothered to look for another app to use. I love this app. It's the only one I deal with, the only one I even recommend, period. I recommend you get on there ASAP. If you want to start a podcast, this is definitely the place to go. It's easy. You can drive around and record. You can sit in your basement and record. You can uh, can do it anywhere. It's fantastic. So if you've always wanted to start a podcast, make money doing it, go to anchor.fm slash start, anchor.fm slash start to join me and the diverse community of podcasters already using Anchor. That's anchor.fm slash start. I can't wait to hear your podcast. What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? It's Adam Rich from the Really Rich Podcast. And today I want to talk about this woke culture that we're in right now, where everyone is either, if you, you know, you hear about how everyone's all for freedom of speech and everyone's all for all these rights and everything, but we see that that's lies. We see that that is just not true. And normally I don't get myself involved in too much of this political stuff. I try to, and I, and I never like trying to sway people one way or the other. I just care about what is right, what is the right thing to do, the right way to think, or the, you know, as far as morals. I'm not saying you should believe in whatever I tell you or you're thinking wrong or anything like that, but it's, we see right now in sports, we, sports heavily, and I'm going to touch on that here in a minute, but. We see it all over the world right now, or all over in our country, in in America, I should say. I don't want to say all over the world and all over our country, because there's a lot of people that listen to it that's not in America. So I I just want people to understand, even if you're listening to this and you're not in America, and you have no idea what's actually going on in the United States right now, I'm going to lay this out for people, because I don't think, regardless what way of life or where you come from, I don't think you're going to disagree with too much about what I'm going to try to get into here. But we'll see. I mean, you never know. But here's the reality. We're seeing it big time with sports now. We're seeing it from actors and Hollywood. We're seeing it in the news. We see it all over that they claim one thing, but then what you really find out is that if you happen to not fall in line and disagree with these people, you become canceled. We hear, there's, a, there's a saying, at least big time in America and possibly all over the world now, but there's a saying about cancel culture. There's a a term, I should say, not a saying, but there's a term called cancel culture. And that's what we're living in right now. It used to be if people didn't agree with you or if they didn't like you, they would just go about their lives thinking that you're an idiot, which is the right way to live. That's the right way to look at it. If if I disagree with what you're saying, I mean, I'm not going to say that just because I disagree with you, you're an idiot. But the point is, I'm not going to try to cancel you. I'm not going to try to make sure that you lose your job or that you can never work again or you can't talk publicly again or you're banned from YouTube or banned from any social media platform. But that's what we are seeing constantly. We're seeing BS lies in the media. We're seeing constant fabrications of stories in there and they push a false narrative because they want people to fall in line. They want people to believe whatever they're saying. And if you don't fall in line, if you dare question them and, and heaven forbid you actually give facts that proves that they're wrong, they want to silence you and ban you from being able to, there, there's even times where people are getting fired from their jobs just for disagreeing. Like, and it's sad because right now we're seeing just a massive decline in sports ratings because they're over politicizing this stuff. People want to watch sports because they like the sport or they want the entertainment or they want to get away from all the crap, the nonsense, the the lies, the media, the the reality. Sometimes it's just to get away from reality. 
And then instead what we see is we see people uh, like painting Black Lives Matter on the courts. We see people wearing these t-shirts and the and on their jerseys it's saying Black Lives Matter and here and here's the thing. I'm not if you support that that's fine. That's on you. You do whatever you want to do. You support whatever you want. But why on earth do we need this nonsense shoved into our faces when we're trying to just watch sports? Why do I have to constantly hear your political view when I'm watching sports? And here's the rub. It's only one-sided. See, if you want to if you want to make it now where all sports are politicized, which I'm not a big fan of regardless no matter what side it's on. I don't want to hear things for or against Trump. I don't care in sports where you stand politically. I don't care at all where you stand politically. And then to be honest with you in life, I don't really care where you stand politically. I don't. Whether you agree with me or disagree, I don't care. We're allowed to disagree. We're allowed to have different perspectives. We're allowed to grow up and think different things because of what we see and what we experience. That's allowed. It is okay. The problem is, is what we're seeing on TV, what we see in Hollywood. I mean, look at the Oscars and when you see award shows. You can't hear these actors go up on stage without constantly shoving their political crap down your throat. But it's only one side. You don't get to see both sides fighting it out, or verbally, of course, not physically. But you don't even get to see the other side of the aisle. You only get to see one side, and if you happen to speak up against it, like, say, I don't know, with facts, then all of a sudden you're canceled, and you could potentially lose your job. You know how many people are getting fired at work because they're right-wing people, or it's announced that they like Trump? There are people all over, and if you don't believe me, look this up, Google it. It's out there. The information is more than available to anybody. The problem is... If you're going to make the or make the um, you know set the standard that you're allowed to constantly spew out your political crap everywhere you go, then I want to hear both sides of it. I don't want to hear just one side, and I don't. It's not even about whether I agree or disagree. I don't care if I agree with you. I don't want. It's so ridiculously unfair and overly biased when you see one side. It's not right. I don't care if the side that you're that you hear is your side and you're a fan. It's not right to hear one side. Like when people put like here's what I think is insane right now. Let's get back into the sports part of this. LeBron James, who I used to love, people that know me know that I used to fight for this guy. I used to defend him. I used to say, look at the numbers he puts up. He is doing better than Jordan and blah, 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 blah. All this crap to defend him. I cannot stand LeBron James anymore. I think he is a joke of a human being. I think that he is the most privileged NBA player on the face of the earth. And yet he wants to come out here and lecture people about his one-sided views. And then if you dare say, it's, it's funny to me too, because his view... I don't even care what political place he, where he stands as far as being Republican or Democrat or whatever. I don't care. What I do think is awful is that this is the same guy that will say that you should agree with everything he's saying. You should fight for Black Lives Matter because it's oppression and all this stuff. Meanwhile, everything about his brand and about where his money comes from comes from China. His shoe sales, his jersey sales, all these things are made and created in China where there is an abundance of oppression of their own people. But you never hear him come out and say anything about that, do you? No, instead, he likes to get on his soapbox and blast the Americans for how awful America has it. Meanwhile, over in China, you legitimately do have slave labor and you have sweatshops making his money for him and he stays quiet. Because why? Because he's a joke of an individual. I will never defend this guy ever again. He is so one-sided and biased, and I don't care how great of a basketball player he is. Nobody here is questioning how good his basketball uh, acumen is and uh, you know how good of an athlete the dude is. He's phenomenal. But if you're asking me to fight against oppression, which I think we all are, this is the, the funny thing about it. Who is arguing that? Who is really out there saying that we should oppress people? Who is who thinks that way? Other than China, you know, the one paying his bills. But who really thinks the same way or thinks that anyone is out there? Like, you know, when we seen the George Floyd thing in that and that police officer was on his neck, I still have not heard one person say, yeah, that that should have happened. 
No, <laughs> like nobody has said that. So this whole idea of like fighting oppression and fighting against the system and all, it's like, what are you talking about? Like nobody is rooting for, you know, police officers to kill unarmed innocent people. And the same thing goes with this Jacob Blake guy. Like it's so insane to me that people are defending this guy, even with all of the facts that are out now. It was one thing when you just heard that a white police officer shot a black man named Jacob Blake in the back seven times. That sounds horrible. That sounds racist. It sounds evil. However, even if it was a white guy shooting a black guy, the sad part is, is now we've gotten to a point in America where we just just blurt out racism regardless. It can't just be a bad cop. It can't just be a bad cop doing a bad thing. And here's here's the another part of the, the equation here is that Jacob Blake, now that all the facts are out, you find out he actually was assaulting and, and uh, I don't know if it was a sexual assault or just physical assault, but assault of a minor. He had plenty of domestic abuse charges against him. He had warrants out for his arrest. That's why the police were there in the first place. The, he was wrestling, like uh, resisting arrest, trying to walk away from the cops. It was found later that when he opened the car door, Door, even though the cops were trying to arrest him and told him to not move and he was resisting and fighting it anyway. Then he goes around to the other side of the car, opens up the car door, reaches in, and then they shoot him. Turns out, fun fact for those of you who don't do any form of research ever on anything, he actually had a knife on the floorboard. So this guy was actually resisting arrest. He wasn't even supposed to be around that woman because that woman is the one who called the police because he was violating either a restraining order or a part where he wasn't supposed to be around her because he was she he assaulted her or had some kind of a domestic abuse charge against him from her. He was there. She called the police. The police then try to arrest him. He resists arrest, walks away from him, opens up the car door, reaches for a weapon. Then they shoot him. And yet here we are. They have the NBA players boycotting the NBA season or well for a game that lasted long, of course, because these guys are stupid is the problem. And I know that this sounds harsh. I know that this sounds unforgiving. I know that this sounds very aggressive on my part, but I'm just so just ridiculously sick of of people picking and cho- like just reading a headline and then fighting these causes like this guy was not an upstanding citizen this guy wasn't out there doing charity work this guy wasn't out there helping people on the street corners and yet the cops just shot him unarmed for fun because they're racists but that's the nonsense narrative you hear and then you got the NBA players Talking about boycotting the season, I think a lot of this was mainly LeBron, and it was a lot of the people, as, as a matter of fact, the Milwaukee Bucks are the ones who kind of started this whole deal with wanting to not play that game because this happened in Wisconsin. And you got riots going all over the place. You got people burning down innocent people's buildings and property and, and people getting uh, beaten up and killed. For what? For, for protecting a guy that, listen, I'm not saying he should have been shot in the back seven times. But the guy is resisting arrest. He's reaching for a weapon when a cop is right behind him. Are are we supposed to get to the point where we wait until a guy murders the police and then other police can shoot him? Is that okay? Or, Or is it now that... Because honestly, it's so sickening to me. It's getting to the point where... If you're black, you're just expected to be able to do whatever you want to the police. And everything is... And if the police do anything to you, it's not It's not justified. Which is absurd. I don't know anyone who really thinks that that's okay. But that's what it's, that's what the media is basically painting it out to be. That's, you got guys like LeBron and and them saying that they're going to boycott the NBA. And like, how does that help exactly? I've been saying that since day one, since I heard that they weren't going to play. I was like, how exactly does skipping the game that you supposedly love, the game that you are so desperate to want to play, how is it exactly that, unless you're going to be out there protesting, which none of them did, of course. I didn't see a single one of them outside protesting. But how exactly does not playing the game that you're getting paid millions of dollars to play, not work, but play, how exactly does skipping out on a fun game that pays you millions of dollars help racism? I still have yet to hear an answer to that. Like, I've asked that so many times now, and yet no one has given me a legitimate answer. And of of course, here we are, two days pass, and then all of a sudden they're ready to play games again. Oh, well, did, did you solve racism in those two days? Did you fix police brutality? Is quote unquote systemic racism 
Is that all of a sudden washed away? And that's another thing I'm getting sick of hearing about is systemic racism. Listen, I am more than happy to fight against racism with anybody of any color. But you got to show me where you know it is. If you're just showing me one guy that you think is racist and then saying, see the, if, especially if he's a police officer or a lawyer or a judge, I don't care where he's at. But if you find one guy who has a job and then he, you find out that that guy's racist, it is so ridiculously unfair to claim that there is systemic racism in that field because one guy in the field happened to be racist or five guys or a hundred guys. What, what systemic racism actually means, and most people never want care to look into this because it's such an emotional issue, and, and I'm sure some of you are even probably mad at me for talking about this the way I am right now, but facts need to be said. We're only getting worse off as a country the more that we just read headlines and then attack because we're too lazy to actually read what actually happened. But if you show me where there's policies or laws built in to oppression of any color, white, black, uh, any color, I don't care, green, it doesn't matter. If you show me where there is a law in, in uh, you know, the judicial system or whatever, with, with the police, with the courts, the judges, all that, if you show me one law that is racist in nature or a policy at a, at a company or a university that is racist in nature, I am more than happy to fight against that with you, regardless what color you are. Because that is not fair. That is not right. However, we still don't see any of that either. People cr- scream and cry all the time. There's systemic racism. There's systemic ra- Where? You, you can't just point at a cop and be like, see, there's systemic racism in the police force. So, show me the law. What Name one law that is, that is allowing for racism or racist intent or racist uh, bills being passed or anything like that. Now, I'll give you back in like the 20s, 30s, and 40s, 1900s, there were laws against that. There was segregation. There was people having different drinking fountains and different bus rides or different buses and different all, classrooms, all kinds of stuff. But where do you see a law or a policy built into a company that is like holds anybody of a certain color back? Just show me one and I'll fight it with you. But we don't see that. Instead, we hear a bunch of people whining about stuff because they don't like the way things are. And I don't either. But the problem is you life is not fair. And I'm not saying that um, we just have to get over it. What I am saying is when you see things that you can fight, that there actually is a clear objective and a clear goal and a clear battle, then let's do that. But if you if you just don't like that a white cop has shot a black person and you don't even care what the situation was and you just say, well, it was a white cop killing a black guy, therefore it's racism and we have a problem with the police force, then I'm not going to agree with that. Especially if you look in the la- in the last study that had come out, there was literally more than twice as many white unarmed people killed in the same span of time as there were black unarmed people getting killed. But nobody talks about that. I'm not saying that it's a racism thing. I'm not saying that it's a systemic problem in the police force. I'm saying, why don't we actually do real research to see what kind of a problem we're actually talking about? Because I'm just getting so sick of this woke culture, cancel culture. If you don't agree with people that say certain things, you're canceled. But if you do agree with them, you sound psychotic, but at least you get to keep your job. Like, this isn't right. This is not how America is supposed to be. So I'm sorry if I'm ranting and you're from another country and you don't like, and you're not seeing, you know, what's going on in America and all that right now. So I'm sorry to just rant like this and give you my problems, (laughs) you know, but I don't, I don't mean for it to come off like that. It's just, man, how, I don't know when enough is going to be enough. It seems like things are getting worse because people are not fighting back against this. Look, I don't know. Listen, does racism exist? Yes, it does. Is there always going to be somebody that is racist? Yes. But are every single one of those racist people idiots? Yes. And that's what we need to understand. We need to understand right now. There is not 
It's not like the majority of people are racist and want people of a certain color dead or certain people, you know, are, but there are there random people like a few sprinkled around here and there. Yes, because some people are dumb. If you're racist against anybody, if you think for some reason that your color makes you superior in any way, shape or form, you're an idiot and racist, but I don't even care. Honestly, guys, I don't even care about if you're racist or not. I really don't. I just think you're an idiot if you are. White, black, I don't care what color you are. If you are racist, if you think that... And you know, and, and here's another one. I just heard this the other day on uh, ESPN. Or maybe it was... Uh, no, it wasn't ESPN because I can't stand ESPN anymore. It's basically become the CNN Sports Network. It's ridiculous. It's so... All they talk about on there is racism now. It's ridiculous. I don't want to watch CNN when I'm trying to watch sports. It's so stupid. But anyway, on Fox Sports, I believe it was... Somebody was talking about the the whole racist element of it, and oh man, now I forgot even where I was going with it. See, I get I get, I get so <laughs> worked up on this stuff because I'm just so sick of hearing it. It's so dumb. I don't want to hear about racism constantly. Like even Morgan Freeman said, if you want racism to go away, you got to stop talking about it. Stop referring to somebody as a black man or a white man, or why can't they just be a man? I, I, it's so crazy, dude. When I, I seen a headline there, I compared these two headlines from the same, uh, it was either a New York post or the Washington post uh, or New York times or the Washington post. I'm sorry. And, and the headline was, it was the same newspaper, but this is what the headline was. There was a, a white person that killed a black person and it said, white man kills black victim. And then when there was a, a black guy that killed a white guy, it said, man kills innocent man or whatever. And when it was a black guy killing a white man. And I'm like, here's the thing. Here's, here's what's fun about that. Why are you specifying a color whenever it's a white person killing a black person, but you're ignoring the color when a black person kills a white person? You shouldn't be specifying the color ever. It doesn't matter. If a person kills a person, why do we add color in there? Oh, to add some flavor to the story, to spice it up, to get it to sell papers. But it's not going to sell as many papers if you said a black person killed a white person. It will sell a lot more papers when you say, oh, another white person killed a black person. Oh, that makes sense. Because we're creating, the media is the number one problem. I say this all the time because they are creating this narrative that makes all white people look bad. And it's, and it's like, I have never felt racially enraged. I've never felt enraged towards somebody based on race alone. If they happen to be a different color than me, sure. Okay, fine. Whatever. That has nothing to do with why I don't like somebody though. If I don't like you, it's because of you. It's not because of your color. You know what I mean? Or maybe it's because of me. I don't know. But the pro- but the deal is, either way, it has nothing to do with race. I don't care what your race is. I know plenty of sweethearts that are different color than me. And I know plenty of evil, just horrid people that are different color than me. You can't wrap everyone up in a color. Not everybody of a certain color is the same. And you know, one thing that's actually hurting the cause of black people is when you have woke black people telling other black people that they're uncle Tom's if they don't agree. Like you're making it a racial thing because let's be honest, we all know what uncle Tom means. It's supposed to mean when a black guy is acting too white. I don't even know why why would you even, why is that even a thing? Like if a guy has a different point of view, if if one black guy has a different point of view as another black guy, that guy becomes an uncle Tom. Like you're racist against your own people. And you're not helping by calling them names that are purely based on a racial thing. Like, how does this help the cause? People should be coming together and sticking together as human beings. You know, like, I think that the whole, uh, the internet and thing, like I've said this before, I think that the internet is one of the most amazing things on earth because it connects people globally all over the place. That's a good thing. It treats us like humans instead of our color. But too many times people get wrapped up in the color thing and they make it a bigger story than it needs to. And it's sad and it needs to stop. If, if we get back, if we can just get back to ignoring the race, maybe we can have entertainment again. Maybe we can have people not on edge all the time. Maybe we can have people that are happy again. You know, wouldn't that be nice? 
people getting along regardless of color. I remember after 9-11 in America, almost everybody of different color happened to come together because it felt like something was being done, like an attack on the country. And if you were a member of the country, a citizen of the country, it brought everyone together. And that was a beautiful thing. We need more of that now. We can't be arguing over color and making everything about race. It's absurd and it's dumb. Start treating people like people and not whatever shade their the me- or whatever however much melanin happens to be in their skin you know but that's it guys i'm not going to rant about this anymore i'm sorry that this was more of a uh, i never want it to be a negative thing man and i'm sure that that's probably how it came off this time but guys the message is i just want to positively move the needle forward to ending the racism thing so i didn't mean for this to come out as a negative thing so hopefully it doesn't but you know i understand i was a little more heated today i'm just so sick of hearing it because that's all we're talking about now and people should not be limited to their color instead of their ideas or what they stand for So, but that's all I got, guys. I love you so much, and I thank you for listening. If you want to leave me a voice message, you can do that through the Anchor app. If you want to get a hold of me on TikTok, it's Adam Rich. Uh, Even on YouTube, I've uh, the name just Adam Rich. Now you can find me on there. I changed it, Um, so it's a little easier to find. Um, On Snapchat, it's really rich. On Twitter, it's really rich Adam. Right? Yes. And then on Instagram, it's really rich podcast or A J M Rich, A J A M R I C H. Um, but yeah, TikTok's where I'm at most. As a matter of fact, I'm about to go live when I hang this up. So by the time you guys hear this, um, it'll probably already be over. But I do try to go live sometimes. LinkedIn is Adam Rich. You can find me on there. But yeah, just get a hold of me, guys. I love talking to everybody, regardless of race, guys. So but anyway, no, I love you guys and I will talk to you soon. All right. Peace. I'm out of here. Thank mm-hmm. you.